Hey, this is Patrick from Curator. I'm very excited to show you this brand new product and how you can integrate human in the loop or human confirmation steps into your AI automations. So I'll just give you a quick demo here and then we can go into the actual setup process. So I have two automations set up in the Make automation platform. This one's really simple. Step one is it just generates a haiku um, about cats and then it's going to send the response from that haiku, the generated poem, it's gonna send that to the Curator API. Curator is going to return a link to a unique session, and then I'm gonna email that link to myself. And when I click on that link, I'll be able to jump right into this confirmation layer where I can actually visually edit the poem that was generated. And then when I hit submit, it's going to send to my post confirmation flow, which is just a webhook. It essentially catches that response, and then it's gonna add the new poem to my Google Sheet. So I have this Google Sheet set up here, and so I'm going to manually trigger, in this case, um, my first flow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hit run once. So you'll see it's generating the poem. This is all just make right now. So there we go, we, we've hit the Curator API, we've triggered an email. So if I go into my inbox, you can see I have this new email that says, hey Patrick, a new poem has been generated. Please click the link to review. So I'm gonna click my link and now I'm jumping right into my curator flow. So you can see that I have this markdown editor field and it's letting me edit in real time um, this poem and then it's got the topic here. So I can edit everything just like if it, I had custom built this user interface and I can you know, do markdown stuff, whatever I want. But what's really cool is when I hit confirm, that's going to be redirecting me to a page of my choice, which in this case, I set the uh, Apple homepage. But behind the scenes, it's actually sent uh, a response back through this uh, second automation, at least I hope it has. So there we go. You can see that it's sent my response. You can even see that my edits in the markdown have been uh, taken into account. So that's the uh, that's the sort of result. And what's very interesting is that you can actually do this with a lot of different kinds and shapes of data. So one thing that I can show you is uh, if I actually go, I'm going to pop over to my uh, software here that's called Insomnia, which is just where I can kind of fake API requests. I'll show you what it's like if I take this uh, one step further. So instead of um, instead of sending that really simple data with just uh, two fields, I can send this much more complicated object with an array of items, and each item is an object with name, price, and description. And so it'll be similar, but uh, otherwise, uh, I don't have to make any other changes in the, in the curator UI. So I'm gonna hit send. This is just the same equivalent of triggering it um, through the API, but I just wanna show you uh, how this works. So I'm gonna just grab this link manually this time, and then I'm gonna go to that session. So now you can see that I actually have, uh, the, the title is, is dynamic based on what I pass into the API, and now I have something much more advanced. So I actually have the ability to edit multiple products. And as cool as this is, uh, what's even cooler is that we actually let you even adjust this a little bit. We're just getting started on these kinds of style changes, but obviously you can add and delete items, uh, but we can also go a little deeper. So I'm gonna hit um, refresh in my admin. So the admin updates based on the most recent response that I got as like a preview so that I can visually edit it. So if I go here and click on the items, which is this over here, I can adjust the display component and maybe I can make it a table or maybe I can make it as a list and then it will display things like that. So let's say I like it as a list. I'm gonna hit save changes. Then I'm gonna go back to my session. So as the admin, you get to determine what, how you want these things to be visualized. So I can still add items, but now when I go into an item, it's actually this uh, fuller interface. And so I can still completely edit this. And at the end of the day, hitting confirm is gonna send it to whatever endpoint I set up. So that's uh, those are the sort of different types of things you can do here. And now just to dive into a little bit more detail about how I actually set this up, uh, I'm gonna go back to Curator and I'm gonna just create a new step, which is essentially a flow, whatever you wanna call it. Um, so I'm gonna create a new step. This is from scratch, I'll show you how I set this up. So 
when you create one, we're just going to show you this right away that like, here's an example. You could pretty much paste this right in to your workflow automation platform. So if I wanted to, I could go into my, um, into my uh, thing here and I could just paste and replace this entirely. And so that's just going to work. This is my actual API key that is, you know, unique for my account. So um, we've got that. And then that's pretty much all I have to do here. I mean, that this tells Curator everything it needs to know in terms of the structure. Obviously, you would have this structure, you would decide on this structure based on what you want users to be able to edit. So it's quite flexible in that sense. And then um, beyond that, there are uh, some other things. So yeah, in Make or any of the automation platforms, you probably have to manually trigger this once so that it can detect the structure. And then you'll probably be able to use the uh, session link that comes back in the response as a variable. So that's probably the most important part for setup is you'll probably have to run that and then you'll be able to grab this. And um, in my case, in my second flow, which is the sort of post confirmation flow, I created a webhook trigger. And then what, at least in make, but I think most of them are like this, essentially they just give you this URL. So all I did, all I have to do is just copy that. And then when I go back into my um, curator setup, so I'm just going to paste that into the submit endpoint. And then the redirect URL, again, is just like sort of for the user to get sent back somewhere. Uh, I guess we, we might even add an option where instead it's just like a confirmation page that says thanks for submitting or something like that. So you can see here that we're still um, we're still seeing this. And that's just because we haven't actually received a response yet. So if I do actually go and run this, um, I think I can just click run this module only. So yeah, so it's gonna run that. Um, I think that means it should have created a session in Curator. So I think I can just hit refresh data. There you go. So now that I have sent that in, we're able to just refresh that. And so I can give this a name, but that's pretty much the setup. Um, I guess one other thing I didn't show off is the ability to adjust the fields as well. So um, like just the plain, plain text field. So instead of just an input, you can make it an editable label where you can just like type and edit right in there. You can make it a, a switch or a select drop down, and then also the markdown editor. So that's, uh, yeah, that's basically how it works. I'm really excited to hear how you uh, might use this for your, um, for your use cases.